Hello everyone, I'm going to present our research on performance of distributed energy resources in three low energy dwellings and examine their electricity use during the UK lockdown period. Uh, the study was uh, undertaken by Matt Craig and myself from Oxford University. Before we get into the study, I just want to give a bit of context. Uh, as we know, to achieve a net zero target for UK, we need to have some kind of a smart, flexible energy system. We know there's uh, in has been an increase in solar PV electricity generation over the years. Uh, between 2018-19, there was an increase of about 19%, um, which is more than any other energy vector. Uh, however, uh, solar PV on its own offers little uh, resilience, uh, given the mismatch between generation and consumption. And that is why some kind of energy storage is necessary to balance the demand and supply. We have also had a uh, growth of domestic battery storage technologies because they have low discharge time and can maximize utilization of local renewables. And these are lithium-ion batteries that have come about and can be uh, controlled over the internet and, and coordinated. Uh, and clearly all this is necessary for achieving the smarter and more flexible energy system, which UK government estimates could save up to 40 billion pounds. COVID-19 lockdown has, uh, has added to it because it has led to an increase in home working and more energy is being used at home. So it makes sense to make that, um, you know, extra utilization from solar PV as, or, or renewables as much as possible. So this study empirically examines the effectiveness of such distributed energy resources. In this case, uh, smart batteries combined with solar PV and look at the effect on actual energy use and peak demand in three dwellings. Uh, we also want to additionally look at the change in daily energy use before and during the COVID-19 lockdown period in the UK. Before we define as from the starting of February 20 to 22nd March 20, and the during is from 23rd March to 31st May 2020. Uh, and we have looked at that by, uh, by monitoring continuously uh, electricity consumption, PV generation, battery charging and discharging, along with other variables such as input temperature and space heating. And we can switch the analysis of the data to arrive at results. The case study dwellings are, as I said, three uh, low energy dwellings designed to high thermal standards. You can see they have fairly low U values as compared to building regulations with an air permeability of four. Um, two of the three dwellings are semi detached, about 85 square meters, two bedroom homes. Uh, and the third one is a detached property, which is about 130 square meters. Uh, all of them are occupied by families uh, and they are always at home. In terms of the heating system, uh, the heating is, in terms of the energy systems, the heating is provided by district heating, which is gas based, uh, which is not the focus of this study. We are looking at electricity and air. And uh, so we are interested in solar PV, which is uh, about 4.3 kilowatt system per dwelling and 14 kilowatt hours of battery storage per dwelling. So fairly large solar PV generation systems per dwelling and, and batteries as well. In terms of the energy assessment results, interesting trends emerged across the three dwellings under study for the study period from February 2020 to 31st May 2020. Without any battery uh, storage, uh, instantan instantaneous use of PV was about 50% across the dwellings, which doubled with the battery storage. You can see here in the second row. And then uh, the household electric consumption on the grid obviously went down with even 10%. The total PV generation obviously uh, also had an effect, uh, whereas 53% uh, is now being uh, exported to the grid and the remaining 47% is uh, either instantaneously consumed or through the battery. So total grid consumption, you know, a third of which uh, is happening, uh, the total grid, uh, in terms of looking at total grid consumption, about a third happens from the grid and the remaining is happening either through PVs or through, through the batteries. Looking at the peak period between four o'clock and eight o'clock in the evening, across the three dwellings, we find that peak wave load is reduced by 96%, 98% and 95%. So over 90% across all the dwellings, uh, if you look at the daily uh, electricity use, uh, which is substantial. When we look at daily energy profiles and looking at ZP3, which is the larger dwelling, uh, which has more occupants, larger size, and also has a wheelchair lift and a fish tank, so it has more electricity demand. Uh, just to explain this graph, the firm line is the household electricity use, 
red is the battery discharged to the home and the yellow is the PV that is instantly consumed. The dotted is the PV generation. What is evident is that battery discharge is happening during the peak period and running through the evening and the night time. Because this has fairly high electricity load, the PV, uh, the battery discharge probably happens here. And then interestingly, the battery charges again during the night time electricity. And, and uh, given that this home is not on an early 27 or time of use tariff, it is scope to look at that. Uh, this is a quite a bit of electricity used during the night time is for charging the battery. ZP1, which is lower electricity demand than ZP3, has interesting results. It, again, bat, uh, the batteries do discharge in the evening, but they don't discharge that much because the electricity use is lower. They don't need to be charged during the night time. So it's, it's, this home will not really benefit from a time of use tariff. So it's interesting to look at these different homes and see how um, you know their uh, uh, energy systems can be managed in, in slightly different ways to maximize the uh, utilization of solar power. Now, when we look at a uh, COVID-19 lockdown period, overall electricity use increased across all the three dwellings to some degree, where uh, you know, slightly between 9% or 30%, despite the fact that two dwellings uh, stated that they are at home all the time for lockdown. So clearly during the lockdown, they couldn't go out as it becomes release and uh, that led to increase in electricity use. On top of that, there was uh, all three dwellings demonstrated sharper increase in electricity demand as you can see on the right hand side in the two graphs uh, that uh, they have been uh, the peaks have become much sharper during the lockdown period because people are obviously more at home uh, and doing things using appliances um, when we look at space heating and heating degree days relationship um, before the lockdown period the relationship is it's quite strong in zp 3.74 or more moderate in zp2 but it becomes, uh, in both cases, it goes down, uh, possibly because it was unseasonably warm weather during the lockdown period. So what were the key findings, you know, and what did we learn from the study? I would say overall electricity use and peak electricity demand increased during the lockdown period, the three dwellings. Um, batteries doubled the cell consumption, solar PV, electricity, and this combination of solar PV and smart batteries reduced peak load by 95%, which is really significant. One of the dwellings, ZP3, as I said, could benefit from some kind of time of use tariff, since 17% of total consumption was due to overnight battery charging. Future research could look at this time of use tariffs added to solar PV and smart batteries to flow grid services, possibly through an aggregator. And I would even suggest that we look at time of day tariffs uh, so that homes that cannot have solar PVs would benefit from uh, local PV electricity uh, through these time of day tariffs so that there's better utilization of renewable energy electricity in, in communities and neighborhoods. For your attention, the study is funded by EU uh, Zero Plus project.